Hello and welcome to Parkway for the Parkway Volleyball Invites. And we have a full morning of volleyball, but we get near, near towards the near end of the tournament today for the very last game of pool play between the co or the host Panthers and the Salina Bulldogs matching up here today. The MAC against the WBL. Gary Bantu alongside Mark Shine. And Mark, you've already taken in a full morning of very competitive volleyball from a around the Lima Land area and two teams that are looking to get the season started on the right foot already there undefeated early on. Chance to see where they are in August before really we get into league play. That would be a factor. Parkway will serve first. They're in the dark uniforms on the left side of your screen. Salina is on the right. First point goes to Parkway. We get the starters out there for Parkway. You have the junior Britton Bruns. Colby Smith is up front. Adria Miller in that back row. The libero is Emery Temple. Dropping back to serve right now is Bryn Shane Lebanon. And the fifth covered up by us right now. I believe that is Cami Langenkamp standing up in the front row. Get you Salinas here as we roll through the serve receive met by Avery Kneekamp. Batted over by Sydney Jenkins. And camped alive. Shane Lebanon knocks it over, keeps it up. Here's an attack from Smith, and it's going to go out. Rest of that Salina lineup. Kira Bangy, Miley Sapp, got Haley Kaiser in the lineup as well. And dropping back to serve this one. I just mentioned Kira Bangy. There was the attack from Parkway, going to go out. Missed along with that hit. Bryn, Bryn Shaleman is the uh, setter. She served the opening set uh, for Parkway. She will be the setter. She's left-handed. And getting the six starter for Salina, Lily Schreffler, after everybody shuffled around. A chance to look there, and Britton Bronze with a big old slam. He evens the yeah. first set up to two. To two. A little different rules here in invitational play. They'll play to a best of three sets instead of best of five. Have more action throughout the night as Megan Hughes checks in for Parkway. And Smith back to serve. Received by Kneekamp, and we'll have to knock this over on the third hit. Cross court set up for Bruns, just tapped over. Kneekamp digs it out. The attack from Jenkins. And unable to be reconciled for Parkway. And Salina back up 3-2. 10-14 a year ago for the Bulldogs. Lost three all-conference players. It was one of the top programs in the WBL historically. And it's a Parkway team that been on the rise the last several years. Had some good seasons. Just over 500 a year ago at 12-10. A huge attack. And ricochets off of Schreffler to knot us back up at three apiece. Megan plays in the front row. She's on a rotation where Adrian Miller plays in the back row. Parkway got here with a win over Columbus Grove, 25-20, 25-10. Competitive set and then one not so much. Backed over top. There's Kanapke with a big attack. And look at that. Just Tap over the top for Miley Sapp. Good court awareness, knowing where everybody was at, and just dropped it where nobody. This is why Miley Sapp was a first team all conference player in the Western Buckeye League last year, and now she'll go to serve. And she'll drop it on back. Jump serve in the air, met by Bruns. Bruns set up for the attack and to go out the back. Britton Bruns. Scored when she was in the left side of the front. This time she's moved to the right side. She missed that one long as Sapp serves again. And met there by the libero Temple. Runs over the top. Nice diving dig. And almost a great save for Salina, but that third tap comes up short. Lily Schrefter tried to one-hand it over, put it into the net. Bruns with the serve. And the attack going to go into the net. Another hitting error for Salina. 
Keeps it at five to five. Runs with the serve in, Sapp receives. Parkway playing those three hits and Shane Lebanon drops it down in front. She was able to get the kill because assist from Temple, the libero, which we see more and more of now, Garrett, mm -hmm. the libero becoming that second setter. And it's tack for Sapp out the back end. Back end. And Bruns continues to serve here. Parkway on a little bit of a rally. Set from Kaiser and the attack, and Parkway not going to be able to keep that off the floor. Good attack by the Bulldogs. Second kill for Miley Sapp in the opening set. New server going to be Sidney Jenkins. And a play, and Bruns digs it out. The attack for Hughes, too strong. Salina has a libero, number 11, Braylon Ashmore. She has uh, not been rotated in yet, but has that option. Mm -hmm. Here's the Jenkins serve. Right at Bruns again. And a big block in the front. Yeah, how about that? Lily Schreffler with the block. Good size in the front for Salina right now where they're located. And when you rotate that around, was Sam playing the back row? A good size all through the rotation. Back row attack for Bronze ricochets off and oh, bring us back to 8-8. Eight, eight. Nobody's been able to get more than a point or two of separation here, Mark. Her third kill and that got that one from behind the 10-foot line. Really nice set from Shane Levin. Adrian Miller checks in, and the senior will serve here for Parkway. Oh, the bet. Knock it over the top. Nice diving dig for Bruns, but nobody there to keep it going. Sydney Jenkins gets a kill from behind the 10 foot line. Here, the knee camp for Olivia Ulene swap for Salina. Line drive serve. And Kanapke picks up the point for Parkway. Her first kill. We should mention, Garrett, that our officials today on the uh, platform right now is Scott Call and Mary Bruns is on the floor as the R2. Busy day for the officials as well. You know, you look at it the, is. All, all that it takes to put an invitational like this together. A lot of table staff, a lot of officials. Kill attempt goes long from Schreffler. Parkway back up by one. First set action on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. And tip out. Panthers by two. Progressing into the halfway point of the set, and that's going to trigger a Salina timeout. We'll take it as well. Minute timeout. Be back after this on WOSN. First set action from Parkway. The volleyball invites six teams from around the Lima Land area. Meeting here at in Rockford for the for the day. A long serve from Emory Temple. The rest of the teams involved. Got Shawnee hanging around, Elida and Ottoville and Columbus Grove. Good mixture from around the surrounding counties and area. And Parkway, the hosts, in front of us against Salina from just up the road. Good volley taking place here. Smith with a little drop down. A nice dig for Avery Kanapi. And here's another over attempt by Parkway. Temple tried to yep. recover that, but going to get outside the stripe. Made a good run after it, but just couldn't get it back inside the antenna. Here's Lily Schreffler dropping back to serve. Met by Emory Temple. And a nice set and attack. 
Cammie Langenkamp to Bryn Shane Lebanon. Her first kill of the match. Mm -hmm. Timeout was good for Salina. Got it back yep. even at 11. Good serve. Third hit over. And now Bruns to just push it over the tape, but going to be short. I think she tried to get a little too cute with it, Garrett. She had a spot over here on the left side of the Salina defense. She just tried to push it there, mm -hmm. but left it short. Still quite even, 12-12. And Sapp goes over for Kaiser, and Kaiser really got up there for the attack, mm -hmm. but a little too much muscle. Really good libero, or uh, excuse me, a really good play by the setter, Bryn Shanelbein. She's not allowed to contact the ball across the net since she's a backcourt player if it's above the height of the net, uh, and she's in front of the 10-foot line. She did a good job of saving that one. One's going to go over from Kaiser. Nice set for Bruns, and she lands it right in the middle of the Solana formation. Good power, hit it through the blocker off a good set. She's got four kills now, does Britain. And she's been a fun player to watch develop over the last couple mm -hmm. of years. Yeah. Some good Parkway teams just a couple of years back. And there's an ace off the serve. 17 and 5 two years ago, and they were 14 and 7 the year before. And she was a freshman and then a sophomore on each of those teams and was more of a setter. But as some players have graduated, kind of filled a, filled a nice role. A little bit more versatile. And that one, it's a little bit too much to handle for Parkway. Carney Langenkamp went up high to get the block, but then couldn't control the first hit after the block. Went out of bounds. And Kaiser will continue to serve it up. Honorable mention in the WBL a year ago. And a wide attack from Bruns. She tried to go down the line that time and just missed. Been going cross court so far, and that time she went down the line, just happened to miss. Good, good idea, just missed the placement. Another big block. That is Miley Sapp. Evens is up at 15. The timing for that and to get her hands pointed towards the middle of the court to keep the ball in play. Got it to 15 all. Good set to start our coverage today. We'll have a couple of more matches for you. Here's a back set. And tipped away. Yulinate powers it past Parkway. Picks up the kill. Got a good set from Haley Kaiser that time. Put her team ahead. Kaiser will serve. Starting to get into those waning moments of the first set, but neither team has been able to pull away. Kaiser with the set. And finds Sydney Jenkins. And now Bruns with a pound over top. Just gonna give it up on the over. Nice drop in, but dug out. Look at that from Bruns. Showing off the power on that left side. Looking comfortable in the left front. A really good point for both teams. Finally the, the kill and put away by Bruns. So now as Parkway will serve, trying to break the 16 all tie. The Langen Camp, the sophomore. Set for Kaiser for Jenkins. Blocked. And he had a couple of Panthers in the front row to knock that one down. Uh, I thought it was Naomi Kanapke who got it. I, there were two people there. I'm going to credit Naomi with that block. Hughes was shoulder to shoulder. But some of these things happen so fast, it's hard to see if anybody really yes. got onto it individually and an ace off the back end. Third ace, that one would be the first for Kanap, uh, Langenkamp. Here's the serve. About got another one. Mm -hmm. 
Jenkins just taps it over, and this one's going to go right back to the Salina side. And Sapp had a fall right in the breadbasket. Yeah. Don't, don't overpass with her in the front row. She put that one away and yep. now gets to serve. You saw why right there. Serve goes up. And the setup for Naomi Kanapke and the sophomore delivers. Parkway with that two-point cushion, and that's so important mm. when you get to this part of the set. Her third kill of the set, that was good, but got it right inside the sideline. Browns with the serve. There goes Sapp on the attack, dug out by Browns. Knapp, he just bumps it over. And we're going to get a yeah. ball handling error by the Bulldogs. Yep. Didn't quite get her feet set, and pretty easy call for the official that time. Pushed the lead to three. Panthers are the first to 20 here. Dangerous dig, and it's going to result in another point for Salina. Olivia Eulinghake got the ball right at the peak of the net, was able to direct it down. Here's going to be Sydney Jenkins. Received by Temple. Here's the attack. Kanapke from the middle. Another big hit for Parkway. It seems like they have, well, really both sides have multiple options, and that's what it's going to take. That's why it's so close here in this first set. Really good pass that time to get it started. And, of course, Shane Levin's set was good, and the kill was equally good. Adrian Miller on the serve. And Bangy. Two blockers there that time, but their hands were not pointed towards the center of the court. That's so difficult to do and direct the ball back to the center of the court. Ball goes out of bounds, and Avery, Avery Niekamp will step in to serve. And a play from Bruns. Kanapi. Too much for Niekamp to keep in. But a sophomore is having a really good game today, Naomi has. Really gotten better as this set has gone along. And she'll come out with the rotation around. Emery Temple serving. Received by Jenkins. And it's going to be a short attack from Dekamp. Panthers within two. I'm taking this first set. This is the last match of the pool play. We'll have the Consolation and then title games. Nice block in the front. That's Cammie Langenkamp. I would say net play in the opening set has gone the way of Parkway, particularly over the last several points. Now here comes Temple serving once more. Salina has no more points to give. Bruns on the set. Tapped over by Smith. And the Bulldogs can't pry it away. It's going to be 25-19. The Panthers take the first set here in their own Invitational. Already with the win of the books for the day. And we'll take the time out and come back for set number two here on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial service needs. Visit your statebank.com, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. First set goes to Parkway here at the Parkway Volleyball Invite, taking on Salina in pool play. And the Panthers strike right away for the First point of the new set. Garrett Mansfield along with Mark Shine. And, you know, Mark, a couple of things might have stood out the way Parkway was able to get things done in that first set. Parkway had 14 kills. They had three aces, missed one serve. Salina had 10 kills, did not have an ace, but also did not miss a serve in the opening set. So I hear from there, errors have pretty much been limited. It's been the ability to force the offense and 
You, there, there's a couple of theories about how you serve, and Salina carefully served. Didn't take any chances, didn't want to miss any serves, and you know some people have that risk-reward idea where you want to, there's an ace, chalk that one up the first one today. This rally continues with the serve of Lily Schreffler. Now, excuse me, that's Bangy in the back row. Goes Bruns. Knocks that one through, so. Britland had uh, five kills in the opening set. She tied Naomi Kanapke, they each had five. Mm. Molly Sapp had four kills for Salina in the opening set. Here's Cammie Langenkamp to serve it away. And the attack for Sapp, she's gonna drop that one down. Even says is back up at two apiece. This is how that first set, or make that the three-two to break the tie. This is how that first set really went. Back and forth until just the very end. Parkway got on a rally to the 25-19 victory. There, Noemi Kanapke, her first attack of the set. And we're gonna get a four hits on the Salina side. Yeah, I think they got a little bit confused, Garrett, who was going to make the third ball hit and kind of at the last moment made a stab at it and ended up being a point for Parkway. That ricochet is off. Receive air on Salina. Lifts Parkway to a one-point advantage. Bruns' first ace of the day. Served into play, dug out by the Bulldogs. Nice dig. A good hit from Hughes, and Salina can't collect it. It's a couple of times now that Emery Temple in her libero position has been used as the setter, and both times they've scored with it. Serve received by Kira Bangi. And from a Kaiser pass, Sydney Jenkins drops it in. Good kill for Sydney, her third of the match, having two in the opening set. This is Miley Sapp to serve it now. Received by Emery Temple. And Noemi Kanapke just missed that near stripe. Good power to the ball, got a good set, just missed the sideline. Another 5-5 tie. Kaiser to Jenkins. Parkway keeps it in the air. Here comes Bangy to set. And Sapp, or make that uh, Ulanek, partially blocked, but it's going to go out. Stay with Salina. Sapp went up strong with the hit, and she said the block went off of hands because it hit so hard it went out of bounds. And into the top of the tape. You get a change in the lineup for Parkway. This will be Adria Miller back in for Megan Hughes. Talked about that earlier. Adria plays the back row. Hughes plays the front row. Received by Jenkins. Back row attack for Sapp. What a set. Defended well by Salina. Here comes Jenkins again. And her big swing. Too tough to tame. Already got two kills out of their first six points. Bruns set that ball and did a nice job with it. But another good set on the opposite side for Salina. Put and the kill by them by Jenkins. Here's the Jenkins serve and wide of the boundary. Well, after not missing a serve in the opening set. Missed a couple here in this one. Junior Emery Temple serving for Parkway. This is going to go over by Sapp. Bruns on the set. Back set for Shane Lebanon. Yeah. 
The attack for Bengi. Now Langenkamp dumps it over. Good little rally going here between the Bulldogs and Panthers. Oh, really and good play. Uh, she missed it, but she knew that she had to stay on the floor to Haley Kaiser. Mm -hmm. She could not contact the ball above the height of the net, so she tried to stay on the floor, hit it into a safe area, and just missed it, mm -hmm. but a smart play on her part. Here's Parkway, a one-point advantage. A win in this set would win the match for the Panthers. Good dig and hammered over. Now Sapp uses the top of the net to knock it down a bit. Smith attack, dug by Jenkins. It was Bangy and is able to sneak it down and sink it in front of Miller. Close to a catch. She caught the ball on her fingertips and pushed it down the sideline. It's one of the things that officials have to decide, Garrett, what is prolonged contact and then consistently do it. And the official at the time decided that was okay. And we get a whistle. What do we got? Stop and play. I think we might have a road. I saw a card come out. I'll see that every day. Well, that is a warning. And they'll put that into a scorebook. I, I don't know who they got for the, the violation that time. Somebody said something or did something in an unsportsmanlike manner, and that's what the warning is about. Hmm. Cards are more accustomed to one of the outdoor games, <laughs> uh, but not, not necessarily volleyball, but they are, they are appearing. This is one of those, put it in the scorebook and don't do it again. Yep. There's not a punishment at this particular point in time. Their coach Hinkle is doing what he should do. He sends his captain over to talk to the official. As a coach, you do not yell across the floor at the official. You ask your captain to get an explanation, and that's what's going mm -hmm. on right now. They'll sort this one out. And they and she'll, Ms. Bruns will come back and explain to her coach what the call was all about. They'll get this set back into place and return to action. And as they do that, we remind you, you can stream the WSN channel anytime, anywhere for just $8 a month. You can download from Roku or Apple TV or sign up at app.wosn.tv. Take WOSN with you everywhere. All on the go or at home. You're looking at the stat page and how good uh, Mac Volleyball has been last year, Garrett. They won 71% of their non-conference games last year and sometimes they're playing each other in tournaments such as we see today. I'll finish that thought in a moment. This will be Shane Levin on the attack. On the serve, rather. And back into play, but Mark, how about you go ahead and continue that thought as we just take in this volley here. It's back volleyball good. You know, it kind of is a sport, not not just volleyball. We know very well what the football success is, and yep. uh, it seems to be that's just the way the conference competes. Let Cammy Langenkamp with the kill right there. Okay, Delphi St. John's could not win a game in the MAC a year ago in volleyball. They were 6-6 six and six in non-conference play. So mm -hmm. it's just a really, really good uh, league in, in volleyball. It's really special. There's an ace. And well, that's going to force a timeout. 11-8 is the set score right now. Timeout taken by Salina. We'll be back in a minute on WOSN. Back at Parkway, where the Panthers hold an 11-8 win, or a lead in set number two over Salina. Their own volleyball invite, full morning, early afternoon of volleyball here in Rockford. As the Panthers hold a good, good rally, but Salina with a big block up front, able to get that service back. You know, it, it excuse close. me, Garrett, in the opening set, 
Salina called timeout, had a big rally and, and scored. And I think they're counting on that right here after getting down three in this set. Try to get back even. It's going to be received. And Bruns on the attack. Good job by Jenkins to keep the ball in the air. And that is Langenkamp on the attack. Kami with the kill. And it's 12 9. Kemi's had two kills in each set now. We're only halfway through set number two. If you notice what Parkway is doing there, when Bruns is in the back row, she sets. And when Shane Lebanon is in the back row, then she sets. Here's Kilby Smith. Sap attacks for Salina. Dug out by Jenkins, and now Avery Meekamp. And bumped over by Kaiser. Good sprawling dig, and then set outside. Sydney Jenkins did a really good job keeping the ball alive that time, as you mentioned, her dive to the court. Here's Smith on the serve, sap on the attack. Hit over the top for Salina. And that's how Bangy connects. Grabs the point. Kira's had a really good second set. That's her third kill of this set. Going to hang her team in there right now. And she'll serve this next one in. Here's the set. And too much to handle from Britton Bruns. Britton got a hold of that one, didn't she? Off a good set. Her seventh kill of the match, second in this set. Here comes Cammie Langenkamp to serve. And it's going to go over the top, and Bruns pounds it down, but it's dug out by Meekamp. Here's the set now. Kanapke finishes it off and it's a 14-10 Parkway lead on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard. Shane Lebba's done a really good job of mixing up who she sets. You know, she doesn't always go to Brun. She doesn't always go to Kanapke. She's, she's spread the ball around a lot. We had third hit over. Shane Lebba sets, Hughes hits, and it's gonna get blocked out of bounds. And we'll stay with Parkway. See, that was huge she set that time. So she just spreads it around and makes it really difficult for the line of defense to get a pair of blockers on the hitter. And the six-foot sophomore comes away with another kill. Now Salina's got to tap it over the top and beyond the boundary. Maybe thinking about using that second time out here soon. Not a lot of aces, but they're putting them on their heels with their service right now. Yep. As Langenkamp continues to serve for Parkway. And a receive goes back over. Bruns attacks and just drops it in that back corner to make it an eight-point advantage. Oh, just exactly what we talked about, Garrett. The, the overpass then on the serve receive set up that kill. Langenkamp again. And Going to go right through the Salina back row. We'll keep the rally going for the Panthers. And here's that timeout by Salina. We'll take it to 19-10 is the Parkway lead set two. They're on the cusp of securing the match when we come back on WOSN. Presenting sponsor of this volleyball match is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. The People's Bank. 1910 Parkway just needs six points to secure this, this match win, leading one set to none. Best of three here in invitational play. Sydney Jenkins and Bruns, how about that? Just sticks the arm out there, gets the dig, sends the ball over the top. But an attack from the Bulldogs. Kill from behind the 10-foot line. Yeah. 
Olivia Ulenek will step in, plays the front row. It's going to be Haley Kaiser now to serve. Kelly Bolenbacher checked in at the timeout, too, for Parkway. Attack for Kanapke. And just too much. Treffler was the first to meet that attack. Parkway the first to 20. Talked about Shane Levin spreading the ball around five different Parkway Panthers have a kill in this set. Hmm. She, of course, Bruns is doing some of the setting as well, and uh, they've done a good job of spreading it around this set. Here's the attack, or the uh, the serve. What that says is you have six on the floor as that attack is out of bounds by Celia. You have six on the floor, and she can't set herself, <laughs> so she's kind of gotten it to everyone. Sapp tried to go down the sideline that time and missed. Serve for Bruns. Kaiser to Jenkins. Dug by Temple. Now Bruns will set Kanapke. Kaiser keeps it alive. Kind of a free ball in the middle, and Sapp and Jenkins collide and lose track of the ball. It's 22-11 now. Parkway just three shy of clinching it 2-0. Because it was third hit, Kanapke could reach over the net to make that play and direct it down. Sent over by Ulanay. Bruns sets up Hughes, but it's going to go long. Played by Jenkins that time to save a ball headed towards her team's bench and to do so without making a double contact. Next serve in from Miley Sapp and Bruns. The sprawl out for the receive and a great dig on the Parkway attack. Kira Bangy pried that one off the floor. We're going to get the stoppage. The whistle keeps coming in. Looks like we have a player in the net for Parkway. She was either in the net or she stepped the foot entirely across the center line. It was one or the other. I didn't catch the official's call on that. Kanapke, she's blocked. Great work up front by the Bulldogs. Keeping this set going, you know, chip away here and there. Miley Seth now will serve. Schreffler with that block. Shane Levin to Kanapke. The Olenek dig, digs it out. Back on the parkway end. A little floater. That set again from Temple, the libero. Couple of exchanged in. We're going to see Megan Nichols for the first time coming in with Colby Smith. And Nichols will serve with Parkway two points shy of a straight set victory. Here it comes. And the attack dug out by Temple. Bruns hurries over to keep it up. And setting up for Smith, gets the kill. Match point for Parkway now. Really good set that time by Britton Bruns to run after that one and get a good set. Set point, match point. So here's Nichols on the serve, met by Sapp. Kaiser, the set to Schreffler. Now here's Smith on Parkway's side. We're gonna get the whistle and it's gonna stay with Parkway. Got a player in the net. Yep, that's gonna Secure it at 25-14, 25-19, 25-14. A straight set win for Parkway. And the Panthers get that one and should put them in our title match at the end. 13 kills in that set. Total of 27 for the match. Britton Bruns had eight of those. So did Naomi Kanapke. They had a total of five aces, excuse me, six aces by... Uh, five different players. Carney, uh, Cammie Langenkamp had a pair of them. Five kills for Kier Bangi. Six kills for Miley Sapp, but just not enough power for Salina today. And that'll be it for this match here at the Parkway Volleyball in Flank. Thanking our sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone, the State Bank, and the People's Bank. Stay tuned. We'll have more 
Volleyball from Parkway will set the stage. When we come back, he's Mark Schein. I'm Garrett Mansfield. Join us for more volleyball next on WOSN. Hello and welcome again to Parkway High School. The Parkway Volleyball Invite continues as we're getting down to the nitty gritty. One of the last matches of the day, it's Ottoville and Salina. Garrett Mansfield next to Mark Shine. And Mark, we have reached this match with a couple of teams that have gone one and one throughout the day, Salina and Ottoville. They had to sort some things out uh, for a while, but here we are in the big green, ready to serve it away to get started. It's Erica Turbin that sends it in, and she's going to get a service ace right out of the gate. First point to the Lady Green. You, you know, Garrett, that's always something you look at on a day like today. Salina has been off for about an hour. Their girls were having time to eat and relax a bit, whereas Ottoville came off a big match, three sets with Shawnee, and got back-to-back -back aces. So the, the kind of thing is who gets started quickly after the different type of break. And that's going to be clear to watch it right now, the team that's been playing so far so good. It is Turbin. Along with Adelina Miller, Kendall Schnipke, Carly Turbin, Bradley Wurtenberger, and Brooklyn Kester starting onto the floor for Ottoville. They throw the libero, Jocelyn Langhalls, out there as well. We get you the Salina starters here momentarily. As that's going to fall out, you got Haley Kaiser, Olivia, or they got Miley Sapp, Sydney Jenkins, Lily Schreffler. Kira Bangi and Avery Niekamp on the court for Salina. A 3-0 beginning for the Lady Green. Turbin serves met by Niekamp. And a sap attack out the back boundary. And the rally continues for Ottoville. Yeah, no question who came out a little bit better prepared for the opening part of this match anyway. Another, Another ace. Yeah. Wow. Turbin's got three aces in five points. Six straight serve. Received by Jenkins, and that looks like some formation for Solana. They got a little bit organized, just, and they're getting the look they want. Just Sapp not able to land it. Well, Miley Sapp was so good in the opening match today, we're going to get a quick timeout. And we'll take the timeout as well. Ottoville out to a big start in the first set here on WOSN. Today's scoreboard sponsor is Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. And also a premier sponsor is the State Bank. For all of your banking and financial service needs, visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Out of the timeout, Salina snaps the streak. They have timed these timeouts well throughout the day today, Mark. They will break a 6-0 run for Ottoville to start. Yeah, that one went to Kira Bangi. She had four kills in our opening match that we saw of them today. And now she serves. There's the reception. Turbin with the setup for Wurtenberger. And it's gonna go wide of the stripe. Gonna stay with Ottoville. Or make that stay with Salina. Tried to go cross court and missed it. This will be Bangy on the serve. In and received. Carly Turbin. There's the attack, and I gotta go again. Too strong for Ottoville. Kendall Shipke with the hitting air. Carly Turbin was well off the net that time and didn't have a good angle to put it down. Consequently, the angle took the ball out of bounds. Seed by Kester. There's the attack. It's going to go over. Turbin to Schnipke. Salina keeps it in the air. Jenkins. It's dug out by Jocelyn Langholz. And just going to be touched over the top. Knee camp over the. Another attack for Ottoville. Yeah, yeah we're going to get that one called dead. Yep. 
That's been a point of emphasis the last three or four years. If you're going to shoot the ball over, you have to do it correctly. There was a time period a while back, if you put it over two-handed like that, you could be a little bit more uh, lenient with it, but not now. Serve in the air and diving stop for Kendall Schnipke. And the Lady Green find a space on the near sideline. Increasing their lead to 8-3. Turbin with that kill. And set one action for Ottoville and Salina. Here's the attack from Miley Sapp. And she'll record the kill. Miley, Miley Sapp had six kills in the previous match that we saw against Parkway. Which we were in a different gym and we don't have any numbers on what Ottoville did against Shawnee in their last match. But out of it was 4-0 coming into the day. Mm -hmm. Now to 5-1. Strong start to the campaign. Here's the next serve in the air. Proceed by Schreffler and they're gonna ricochet off. You know, Mark, that's always an interesting thing for a, a school School like Ottoville get into an invitational like this. You're playing a lot of bigger schools uh, as, a, as a D4 program and really get tested early. And I think that's why you do it. Let, let's see how good we are. And as we head into league competition, blocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with Salina. Here's the sap serve. And that will just float over the top. The net got a, gave that ball a little bit of help, but it's going to fall in for Adeline Miller. Almost looked like she mistimed it, but because of how the contact occurred, she got a point out of it. Riley Wurtenberger to serve. Be met by the Bulldogs. And an attack from Olivia Ulenake. She drops it in the middle of the formation. Good hit by her that time. Here's Jenkins to serve. And really the difference right now is that big start for Ottoville. Started out with a 6-0 run. And that serve will be mishandled by Wurtenberger. Jenkins will drop back and do it again. First ace of the match. Salina goes to Sydney Jenkins. Of course, Turbin has three already for Ottoville. Goes in the air, a couple of Lady Green were there. There's Sap to ricochet off of Langhalls and stay with the Bulldogs. Slyna just slowly creeping back into it after that 0-6 start. Good time out. Right now watching it, Snowball. Jenkins sends it over. Erica Turbin with the set. Attack from Vanessa Hilver is dug out by Sydney Jenkins. And a long attack from Sapp. Monty Sapp tried to get that to come down from behind the 10 foot line. Just went long. And there's Langholz to serve. Honorable mention in the Putnam County League a year ago. And she'll serve again. Another ace. Fourth one of the set. Jocelyn Langles is the libero for the Ottoville Big mm -hmm. Green. Jenkins receives. Big block in the front. Looked like Kendall Schnipke. She was honorable mention a year ago as a freshman and the sophomore with another block. I like the timing on the block. Line Good drive serve. serve. And Yulenek, Yep. she met it, but nobody there to keep it off the hardwood. Ottoville getting another rally put together. Good serve again. 
So Gabi set over by Sapp. Here's an attack from Bangy. It's going to go out the back end once more. I looked for a moment to see if there was a touch because she wasn't able to quite get on top of the ball and drive it down, and not a touch, so point goes to Ottoville. Jenkins. It's going to go over. Here's Sapp. And it's going to deflect off Wurtenberger. It's that rotation that we saw in our opening match today. Avery Niekamp and Olivia Ulenake. Avery Niekamp plays in the back row and will serve. That's received by Carly Turbin. Sap with the dig. There's Kaiser setting up Jenkins. And Langhalls tried to step over into that open space. Couldn't get under the ball. Salina continues their serve. Sydney Jenkins from behind the 10 foot line and line drives it across court. There's the attack. Vanessa Hilvers shoots it out the back corner. Had some real estate back there. You know, this is the third match of the day for both teams, and they seem to have lost a little spring in their legs. Here's Kaiser, tried to drop it in. Now Schnipke, ricocheted, kept at the net. Another attack, and that is going to fall in. It was going to be yeah. inbound or tipped either way, but Carly Turbin walks away with another kill. Well, the call was that Niekamp touched it, but I think it was going to land in either way. Now it's turn for Brooklyn Kester to serve. The 17-11 look on the Wabash Mutual Telephone scoreboard for the Lady Green. The attack for Sapp. And Kester couldn't stay under. She's got top spin on the ball when the ball crosses the net when she hits from behind the 10 foot line. The ball was starting to dive and obviously got a point out of it. Here's the serve. Braylon Ashmore. Libero for the Lady Bulldogs. Turn that into an ace. And there, hit. Erica sets up Carly Turbin. And a big score for the Lady Green. That's where the set was, Garrett, right on the net. So she didn't have to you know, swim, spin sideways or go backwards forward or whatever. It's a great spot for her to drill the ball down. Uh, short serve from Erica Turbin. I think Erica's allowed to do that since she has three aces. <laughs> <laughs> There's a set for Kendall Schnipke. This one's going to go over. Good save by Niekamp. Now Kaiser set for set. Blocked up front. Bulldogs keep it in the air. And we're going to get a audible player in the net. I call that against Carly Turbin. That trims down the Ottoville lead to three. It has all been down to the fact that first six points that went to Ottoville's way, and Slime has been chasing them the whole time. Here's the serve by Bangy. No miscommunication after a just a tough serve to receive. And Ottaville will trigger a timeout as their lead, which was commanding. Now it's down to two. 
Solana making it, the Lady Green sweat a little bit. We'll take the timeout as well here, still in set number one of this consolation, consolation match on WOSN. Today's presenting sponsor at the Parkway Volleyball Invite is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities that we serve. Your bank, your way. Ottoville has seen a big lead in this first set evaporate. Now Salina looking to inch it down a little further. And an attacking air, Jenna Seaver sends that one into the nylon. Tried to hit that one off the right corner. Hit it into the net. Been a busy day of volleyball already. These two teams looking to finish the day strong, and just like that, we're all square at 18. About that, the resiliency of Salina. Get a slow mm -hmm. start and come back to tie it up at 18. There's the serve in the air for Kara Bangi. And Carly Turbin. That last attack for Ottoville. Here she's set up again from Erica Turbin and finishes. So there's that 19-18. And Kendall Schnipke will serve it next for the Lady Green. You talk about being in rhythm. That play was perfectly done. Good pass, good set, and the kill. Right in the front of the net, it's over. Free ball. Good attack for Sapp. She bangs it back over the top as it came back her way. And another block up front, but it's going to go out of bounds. Another kill for Carly Turbin. Sapp was there, as was Haley Kaiser, but block went out of bounds. And 20 to 18 advantage for Ottoville. Erica Turbin to Carly Turbin. And not quite dug out by the Lady Bulldogs. Been a real, well, a set of really runs back and forth, hasn't it? Absolutely. And when Ottoville needed points, guess where they went? Right to Carly Turbin. Yep. And the serve from Schnipke. Solana recovers. Gets the ball back over to Ottoville. And using that narrow side, it looks like we got a Ottoville got into the net, yeah, they, or else it would have been a nifty kill. They called Turbin for being in the net on her follow through. That might have been her best hit of the day as far as power, but she got herself into the net too with a follow through. Haley Kaiser on that last serve for Salina. She's gonna set this for Sydney Jenkins. And that lands for another Salina tally. Here comes Salina again. Kaiser serves in the air. And a big swing from Carly Turbin. It finds its way in that last couple inches of the, of the back row. Her fifth kill, but now she rotates to the back row and will serve. They're really productive when she was in the front row. Long set in the direction of Jenkins. That just gets tapped over by Miller. Dug out by Kaiser, Sapp. And just answer. an over ball, mishandled, and <laughs> Ottoville two points shy of a set win. So they find ways to set her behind the 10 foot yep. line. <laughs> Turban serve is met. Sapp pushes it over. Cross court for Vanessa Hilvers, and Salina can't return it. Set point coming up. Vanessa Hilvers' first kill of the set. In the air for Ottoville. Here's an attack from Sydney Jenkins. 
A block by Sapp. Hilvers again. Nice dig by Jenkins. There Carly Turbin picks that one up in the back row. Langhalls with the overball. Nice diving dig by Langhalls. Good long volley here. The late stages of the first set. Sap with it over. Hilvers tipped and dug out. Nicely done by Kaiser. This might be the longest val oh, volley is. we've seen of the day. What a really good point this is going to be. And then the point. Adeline Miller finishes off the first set. Ottoville with a 25-20 win through our first set of this consolation match. Take the time out and return for set number two, a decisive one here on WOSN. Back for our second set where our school board is sponsored by Wampash Mutual Telephone. Proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics and career sponsor of today's match is the State Bank. You can contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing the lender. Set one goes to Ottoville here. Our second to last match of the day. And Ottoville, 25-20, jumped out to a big lead. Salina stormed all the way back, eventually tied it up at 18-all before the Lady Green finished off that first set and the first point of this set, number two, goes to Salina. Libero Braylon Ashmore comes in and picks up an ace. And then service yeah, Served along. In the opening set, Ottoville had 12 kills, six of them by Carly Turbin. They had five aces, three of them by Erica Turbin. Eight kills for Salina, four of them by Miley Sapp. Three different girls had an ace. Carly Turbin serves in that one. Right over the net, into the wheelhouse of Annalyn Miller, and she connects. I'm thinking the exact same word, right into the wheelhouse, and on the overpass, puts that away. Excuse me, I think that was actually Carly Turbin. Got Miller out of the game right now. Here's Sapp with the attack. Dug out by Langholz. And this one will go wide of the tape on the far end. Kendall Schnipke on the attack air. Tried to get a little too fine with it, hit the sideline instead of you know, aiming in a little bit closer to the middle of the floor. Set in the attack, good block up front, and it's Sapp that helps lead to that. Jenkins was on her other shoulder, but the duo up in the front by the Bulldogs make a nice barrier. Well-timed on the double block. Turbin to Turbin. Jenkins dug by Langholz. And Carly Turbin. It's off a had, hand, right? Yep, got deflected yep. at the net. Three all. Miller taps back in for Langholz and dropping back to serve. Kendall Schnipke. This high above the court, sometimes it's hard to see the cat touch, mm -hmm. but you can see when the ball changes angle. Kaiser sets up for Jenkins. Avery knee camp dug out. Sap a big swing. And yeah, that's blocked. Sap, those long arms. Tough to get a ball pass, especially. The hit was a little off balance, Garrett, and because of that, didn't get as much steam mm -hmm. on it as is typical, and then Sapp with a well-timed play. Yep, thanks for cleaning it up for me, Mark. <laughs> Here's Kaiser on the serve. And another strike from Turbin. It's gonna be Salina in the net, but it's gonna be a moot point. Would have been a perfect kill otherwise. Yep, yeah, so you don't get it on the stat page. That's right. <laughs> Got Sidney Jenkins from the net. Vanessa Hilvers. Oh, come on, Coach. In. Give me a kill for that, yeah. will you? <laughs> uh, 
Here's the set. And an attack from Olivia Uline. And her and Sapp connect on a continuation. And Ottaville sends it too long. Erica Turbin's a back row player, so she could not jump from inside the 10-foot line and try to, to hit, put, hit the ball down. So she tried to angle to the back side and missed it. Attack from Hilvers. Looks like she landed it, but it goes out. I thought perhaps it was touched, and again, that's it's that close. angle that we have way up above. Instead, it went out of bounds off the net. Miley Sapp on the serve for, for Salina. Now Sapp in the back from the back row. It's a long attack. Ends up finding its way into the net. So here goes Brantley Wurtenberger. Pretty large sophomore class. Wurtenberger part of that. This Ottoville team. Comes blocked up front. Molly continues, but virtually yeah. no angle to continue that play. Yep. Third hit, and you got to find a way to snake it around inside the antenna. That's almost impossible to do. Good effort that time by Langles, but just not able to complete the play. Mm -hmm. Sydney Jenkins serving. Miller is able to get the underhand pass to Wurtenberger. Ottawa will pick back the volley. Another side out. Briley's first kill of the day. The Salina captain, Haley Kaiser, has questioned our up official, Sue Bruns, about something. I'm not mm -hmm. sure exactly what the call is about. And now we're going to have a little discussion on the sideline with our our true Scott calls. Well, I'm not sure mm -hmm. what to call, what the discussion was all about, but. It's not going to come to much. Yeah. Kaiser over the sap. Almost went through the fingers. Salina keeps it alive. Really good play by Sapp to keep that one alive. Big block, but we continue. Another nice. good play. Wow. Starting to sprawl out, but Ottoville picks up the tally. Jenkins made a good effort for that one, but couldn't keep it in play. Tied at seven. And a short serve into the net for Langholz. Pretty clean service day for both teams. I think Salinas missed one serve, and Ottaville's missed two in this match. There goes the attack for Ottaville, dug out by Jenkins. Wurtenberger into the net on the attack. She had to back up to play that when she wasn't able to step into it. Because of that, the ball goes into the net. Avery Niekamp on the serve. And she'll get another after the ace. Her first of the day. Change of the lineup. Chloe Wanamaker into the contest for Ottoville. Serve right to her. Good to receive. And a hit off the side of the hand by Schnifke. Good way to phrase it, Garrett. The ball went off the right side of her hand and just snaked up. Wouldn't go across the net. Timeout. Salina with the four-point lead, their biggest of the match so far. We'll take the timeout as well. You're watching WOSN. Welcome back to the Parkway Volleyball Invite, where the presenting sponsor of the day is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. Salina with a 
four tally lead here in the second set over Ottoville, who took the first set of this consolation match in Parkway. Chance for the Lady Bulldogs, but dug out. Cross court set up, and it is landed by Kendall Schnipke. I think Salina thought the set was going to the middle hitter. Went right over her head on to Schnipke on the left corner. She put the ball away. Good attack for Ottoville. Brooklyn Kester with a good serve. And a hitting error from Kira Bangi. Now lead down to two. Back and forth. This is a, a game of momentum and it ebbs and flows. And pushed ahead. Good save by Ottoville. Here's the third hit. Langholz gets it over the top. And blocked up front, up, oh, kept alive, but that's going to be four hit. No. Got a player in the net for Ottoville that extinguishes the entire potential score for Ottoville. They called it on Kendall Schnipke being in the net. Here's the Salina serve. Ottoville made up some ground, but quickly losing it right here after an ace. Braylon Ashmore will serve again. Braylon's got three aces, two of them in this set. Erica Turbin with the setup. It's blocked and a wise decision for Shippey to let that ball land out of bounds. Really good communication. You can hear him all the way up here. That ball's going to be out. New entry for Ottoville, Jenna Seaver. Kaiser sets up Bangy. Turban to Turban, but almost leveraged into the air. Haley Kaiser couldn't quite keep it up. Erica Turban did a good job with the set that time. She serves here. Sapp sends it over and put those block hands up. Ball just fell right down between front row of attack in the, the net. The Schnipke and a teammate were there, but their hands weren't over the net, so the ball ended up falling on their side, and ooh, just missed. Ashmore served not out by much, but just enough. Now it's Schnipke's turn to serve again. Competitive second set, 14 to 12. Not much you can do there. The big hit by Sapp. Her best hit of this match seemed to be uh, anyway. She got up yep. well on that one. Found her right in the middle. Let me Yulinek. They're going to get into the contest for Salina with Haley Kaiser serving. Nice dig for Kaiser. Now Jenkins sends the ball over the net. And it goes out. I think she relaxed a little bit on that, which knew it was going to be a free ball to the other side and didn't make real solid contact with it. Still just a two-point contest. And Sapp with a big hit and Falls down, Jenna Seaver had the second opportunity. Molly Sapp has a total of seven kills today, three into this set. She gets to serve. Here's the serve in. An attack from Madeline Miller. That halts the Salina rally. The separation's just two now. Two pretty evenly matched teams. Oh. 
Ball in the air from Bradley Wurtenberger and into the net. Two missed serves in this set for the Ottaville Big Green. They don't have an ace in this set after having five in the opening set. So D. Jenkins serve met by Wurtenberger. Carly Turbin knocks the ball over and it can't be returned. Ottaville still right there looking to grab some momentum. Overpass got up into the net and the setter Kaiser couldn't get to it without going into the net, so the point goes to Ottoville. And a wide serve mm. from Langholz. Second time she's missed a serve into this set. And getting into the deep stages of set two. If we need a third, we will play the 25. The invitational difference here. Long set for Bangy, dug out by Langholz. And Turbin pass and a Turbin attack. Erica the Carly turns into a score for Ottoville. The only set in high school volleyball that goes 15 points is the fifth set. And we only played three sets in tournaments like today. Brooklyn Kester serves away. Mishandled, but Sapp just whacks it, and she gets that one to get inside the boundary. Very, very close call. But it gives Salina a score. Quite honestly, I couldn't see it because the head coach is in the way, and I couldn't see yep. where it landed, but uh, some of the Ottawa players thought it was deep. And what do we got? Oh, libero change. That's what we got. Here comes Ashmore. Erica to Carly Turbin. Ottoville back to within two. It's just been two to three, two to three here for the last 10 minutes, it seems like. Yep, it seems like we've gone around the rotation very quickly and maybe three times in this set, but that's just because there has not been long rallies. Kaiser's pass to Sapp in the middle. And Sapp down on the, on the court. And we're going to get a point signal for Ottoville. Well, the kill was done by Carly Turbin. The question is, did the official stop play before the kill occurred? Mm -hmm. You can see our R2 on this side is talking to the scoreboard about whether that should count as a point. And I think it did. That would be a big loss if Miley Sapp cannot play at a high level or not able to play at all. Be a, a, mm -hmm. a really tough thing to lose here in set two. You've already lost one set. Now you're up a point in this set. And with that, they're going to take a timeout okay. to tend to her as well. One point differential, second set. We'll take the break and be back on WOSN. Presenting sponsor of today's Parkway Volleyball Invite is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. The way the rule book leads, they either had to take her out of the game or call a timeout at that point. They ended up doing both. On the bench now with a leg injury of some type. And there's an attack for Ottoville to even the score up. Carly Turbin becomes our first player today to be in double figures with kills mm -hmm. as she now has 11. Here's the attack and Salina scores it there. And you know, Mark, as you know, Saps, Sap coming out. The good news is we saw just 
lighthearted exchanges yes. from teammates right away. And you know, she's working with the roller right now, got a banana in hand and uh, and some water. So it be something minor, probably a cramp. Well, Kiara Bangy scored the point a moment ago by pushing the ball to the great spot on the floor. Then she gets an ace, so she's responsible for the last two points here for Salina. And Otto, or Salina saves. Could have been an Ottoville score. And there's Carly Turbin. Nice over for Salina. And a big strike again. Did we have a Bulldog in the net? We did. We do. Got Sydney Jenkins in the net. Quite honestly, I followed the ball. I didn't see where her contact occurred, but that's what the official signaled. And this one's coming right down to the wire, this second set. If Solano holds on, we'll have another first to 25. But if Ottoville can win the race to 25 this time and winning by two, the set would be in the books, or the match would be in the books. And that's going to tie us up at, no, no, no. Well, the call was that number 10, Brody yep. Wurtenberger, was in the net that time. Gives Salina a two-point pad. And get Olivia Yulinek into the game. Carly Turbin receives the serve and the attack and will get the kill. Now she'll drop and serve. Ottaville circles in Vanessa Hilvers. Salina trying to get set defensively still. They want to change their serve receive on the fly. And it pays off. Olivia Yulinek with the attack. Now Salina within two of extending this match. That Ella Shelby who came in momentarily. Now she's on a string with Brianna Kinnicutt yep. who will play back row. This is in the spot that Molly Sapp was in. And Miller, did she hit that outside marker? She did. She'll get credit with the cross court kill. Just got in. And we've got a three ball system here and they're all they against are the all, bleachers yep. on the far side. You know, I see Miley Sapp over here. You mentioned she's eating the banana and, and she's drank some water. But once you get that cramp in the day, it is hard to not keep it coming back. Trying to keep that leg loose. Trying to get her back in there, maybe. If Salina can force a third set, and that is tapped over the top for the Lady Green, and we'll score it to even the score at 23 apiece. So it's going to come down to these last couple of serves, Mark, to decide this one's over. We're going to keep going. Erica Turbin's the setter, but she's in the front row, so she was able to hit that ball down like that. That's going to be a miscontact. Yep, and that's going to set up match point for Ottoville. Briley Wurtenberger on the serve. Kaiser with the set. The attack by Ulenek and a miss hit leads to Ottoville closing on a big rally to take this match two sets to none. Doing some quick looking at our stat numbers here. Looks like there'll be four aces in this mm. set for Salina. A total of seven. Braylon Ashmore had three of those. Leading kills with Miley Sapp with seven before she left. Carly Turbin had 12 kills for the Ottoville Big Green. They did not have an ace in set number two, but they did have five of them in the opening set. Three of them from Erica Turbin. So good win for Ottoville. They came back to get the last several points, but they needed to do so. And they're gonna, they'll end the day two and one here at the Parkway Volleyball Invite. We'll thank our sponsors, Wabash Mutual Telephone, the State Bank, and the People's Bank here in our second match of the day. We'll have more volleyball for you after a bit. Stick with us. He's Mark Shine. I'm Garrett Mansfield. Thanks for watching WOSN.
Hi, and welcome to Parkway, where Shawnee starts with a serve of the championship match of our Parkway Volleyball invites. Playing for all the marbles here in this one, the host Panthers with a long attack from Britain Bruns. We'll meet the starters here in a moment, but I'm Gary Bansfield, and he's Mark Schein. And Mark, the day has been filled with a handful of matches for all of the six teams here, but what's gotten Shawnee and Parkway to this well, match? Well, Parkway got here by playing four sets. They beat Columbus Grove and Salina in two sets each, where Shawnee has played five sets. They beat Elida in two, and then they had to go a three-set match to defeat Ottoville, a very hotly contested contest, and so they have played five sets today. Gives you the starters for each side here. As Shawnee will set things up on a, their end, one point apiece in an attack air. Shawnee, Gianna Upshaw, Josie Hutchins, Carly Hutchins, Leah Ruddesill, Mackenzie Brickner, and Liz Kinnear, the starting lineup, and then Maggie Jordan checked in at libero for Shawnee. There's the receive from Ruddesill, turns into another Parkway score. Lady Panthers, Britton Bronze, Emerly Temple, Colby Smith, Brandon. Shane Lebin, Cammie Langenkamp, and Adrian Miller, the initial starters. Smith serving here for Parkway, and there's a service error. So Colby Smith racks up an ace, and then a service error in her two efforts. Here's Josie Hutchins with the serve. Freshman dropping back. And Smith couldn't hold on to it. Serious pace on the serve that time by Josie Hutchins. And there's Smith corrals it. Britton Bronze on the attack. And that deflects off a potential blocker to score for Parkway. Of course, we were here for the semifinal match with Salina. Britton Bruns had eight kills in that uh, match, the two-set match. There's Cammy Langenkamp. There's the attack for Upshaw, scoring it. Racked up at four. Parkway, unbeaten early in the year. Since Shawnee played in the other gym, we don't have any numbers on how they have uh, performed today as far as stat numbers. Mm -hmm. Good dig for Mackenzie Brickner. Cross court attack from Ruddesill. Now here is Britton Bruns, and that's a big smash for Parkway. Since both teams are in black uniforms today, Shawnee is on the right in your screen. Parkway's on the left. They have some white trim on the, their jerseys. But the two very similar uniform mm -hmm. combinations today. Yeah, not too different. About the only thing that is is the yeah, the sleeves for Parkway. Bumped over top for Ruddesill. Britton Braun sets up. Haley, or make that uh, Naomi Kanapke. Tacks a little too long. They'll rotate in. New players for Shawnee. Emily McKissick will place Gianna Upshaw. That ball is headed right for the corner. But went just a little long. Good attack, Sammy Reddig couldn't keep that in play. Naomi Kanapke gets her first kill. She had eight also in the semifinal win over Salina. Adria Miller checks back in, she'll serve. 6-5 on that Wabash Mutual telephone scoreboard. There's the set and the attack. Liz Kinnear. Misses the boundary. Breckner sets up Ruddesill in a continuation. Now Parkway gets organized. And Smith with the tap is going to go outside as well. The ball came off her fingertips in a really odd manner, didn't it? Pushed it all the way to the sidelines. Now Reddick serving. Out. Excuse me, Reddick out, Josie Hutchins in. 
Leah Runnisil serve. Here's Kanapke, just smooth. Pass was right on target, and a big whack. That got her fan base fired up right there. Put your team up too as the libero goes back to serve in the form of Emery Temple. And a short serve. Here's her counterpart, Maggie Jordan, the libero for Shawnee to serve. Here's the pass for Langenkamp. Parkway starting to get some rhythm. They do. I think their net play has been better so far. They've missed a couple of shots, particularly on the serving end. Bryn Shane Levin to serve it away for the Panthers. Now she'll set up Britton Bronze. Good dig for Jordan. And we continue. Josie Hutchins finds an open spot in the middle of the floor. Side out for Shawnee. Solid point for both teams that time. Good diving stop on the defensive end for Shawnee. Set the play up for Schilt to put it away. Here's Carly Hutchins, the servant. Second teamer in the WBL last year. And the attack for Britton Bronze. And oh, and Josie Hutchins just stuck a wing out there and kept the ball in the air. Here's the attack by Langenkamp, and it lands. We watched our earlier match with Parkway today. Shane Levin does a really good job of mixing up who has the chance to make a kill. And so far, Britt runs. Naomi Niekamp and Carly Langkamp all have two kills. Colby Smith with the serve. There's the Upshaw swing. Now Bruns on the attack, blocked but out. Point Parkway. Hutchins to Hutchins on the set and a block up front. Looks like Langenkamp there to snuff out the attack. Shawnee has that uh, single loss to Coldwater in three sets. Coldwater Cavaliers are really, really good this year. And a Smith serve into the net. So now it's Josie Hutchins with her turn to serve. And that'll be off target. Found Coach Hinkle on the near sideline for Parkway. Going for that corner over here, almost by the Parkway bench, and missed it. Now Upshaw sends this one out. Got touch. Yep. Called the touch on the near side. Nice side up for Shawnee. Line judges are so important. Both line judges had that call. That really helps your official out. Kenzie Brickner on the serve. Seed by Temple. Pass ahead for Kanapke. Now Brickner blocked. It's Kanapke. Set that one back to the center. Good timing on that from the middle of the court. Push the lead to four. Diving receive for Shawnee. Here comes Upshaw, that left-handed smack. Pushed over by Parkway. Upshaw again, dug out by Colby Smith. And just touched over. Shane Levin. She keeps it up. And how about that line drive? Over. What a defensive sequence that was by both teams before Rudisil put the ball away. 
either team blinking yet to call timeout. Here's Emily McKissick, a junior. Received by Emory Temple. And Kanapke just floating in the air, waiting for that ball. You know, he's got four kills already, the sophomore middle hitter. Adria Miller returns, tapping out Megan Hughes. Runnisill, a little short on the attack. Two blockers were there, but the ball got into the net, so it was going to fall on Shawnee's side anyway. Biggest lead for Parkway now at five. Good serve. Yeah, that's going to fall in. And there's that first timeout with Shawnee down six, 17-11. We'll take it as well. Be back with more from Parkway on WOSN. Set number one of our championship match here at the Parkway Volleyball Invite. Our sponsor is brought to you by Wabash Mutual Telephone, proud supporter of Mercer County Athletics. Serve in after a 17-11 timeout by Shawnee. And the Panthers connect on another point. That time, Bryn Shane Levin. The left-hander from the right corner. That's her power side. Hit through the blocker to make the lead seven. Here's the Adria Miller serve. It's going to go out the tail end. Brings it to within six, and it's a sum here for Shawnee. Of course, a week from tonight, Shawnee will play in Spencerville outdoors at the football field. A new event. WSN will be there to cover that. Another attack, and that's going to be quite the, the spectacle. I don't think you see much of that at the high school level. And, we play the JV match at 6.30, the varsity match after that, of course, hoping to have it under mm -hmm. the lights in a big crowd. I capture that success of the Nebraska match. Yes. Handful of, I think that was last year or the year prior. There's a handful of different ways you can do that. Here's the, the either right on the turf, as we were may, yep. may envision, and it sounds like it's going to be. Also, they make the... They call a, I think it's a, a TerraFlex floor, which is a real thin, movable, right. movable uh, floor that you can put out and uh, serves just like it is inside. Parkway is really playing at a high level right now. They are taking command of this set. Up nine. And now Shawnee's able to almost return that volley, but it's going to go. You saw Maggie Jordan straddling the 10-foot line. That means she cannot contact the ball above the height of the net and send it across. So she tried to line drive it over and wasn't successful. Bronze. Couple of Panthers collide down. Trying to go after that ball. Everybody's all right. Now Jordan will serve it for the Lady Indians. Received by Temple. Cross court for Smith. Nice dig for Leah Ruddesill. Now Ruddesill will send it over top. And Langenkamp no. drops it in. A dramatic call from the line judge. Thinking, oh, maybe, yeah. but nah, -uh, it is in. It looked like it was headed out and that she, she yep. was about to make that signal, but made the correct call because it did dive inside the line. Good. Good spin lead. to get that to sink. Shane Levin on that serve for Parkway. And Ruddesill drops one in the middle for Shawnee. Good kill from behind the 10 foot line. You know, you talked about the girls scrambling on the floor a little while ago as a, a fan and as a referee, and now as in broadcasting for several years for volleyball. I'm amazed more girls don't get injured with those dives mm -hmm. like that into each other and the collisions that take place. That's going to go into the net. Set point. 
Lady of the Marvel is just, you know, it's it's the man thing. It, they, it, the, clearly, the communication's better it, amongst the ladies to be able to avoid all the serious injuries. Jana Upshaw slams it home, keeps the set going for a little longer. Shawnee has just seven kills in this opening set. Upshaw's got three of them. But the net play has certainly favored Parkway in the opening set. And a service error and set number one, 25-15. Parkway with a dominant opener here in the championship match. At the Parkway Volleyball Invite. And we'll take a timeout return for set two after this on WOSN. Back at Parkway, where the Panthers with a one set to none lead. And there's an attack. Carly Hutchins turns in the first point of the second set for Shawnee, and now she'll serve. Gianna Upshaw will check in quickly for the Tribe. It's because the libero Maggie Jordan became the setter that time and let the normal setter Hutchins go up and be a hitter. An attack for Langenkamp. Jordan recollects that ball after it got awry. And here comes the slam, and Bruns comes up short. In the opening set, Parkway had 13 kills, five by Naomi Kanapke, seven kills for Shawnee, three by Gianna Upshaw. One of the negatives, though, Shawnee had four service errors in the opening set. And a big hit for Britton Bruns. That would be Britton's fourth kill of this match today. Here's that substitution with Megan Hughes and Adrian Miller that takes place so that Miller can serve, play the back row. And the serve here for Colby Smith, low okay. line drive. That just deflects right off of Leah Rudisil. The wrong person serving, didn't they? That's a good serve. Good line drive serve. Hard to handle there. Yep. Smith will do it again. Even up at two. New ball in play. Another and one. Another ace back to back. Back to back. That's her third of the match. In the opening set, Parkway had three aces and three missed serves. And make it three in a row. Uh -huh. Hot server. See if Shawnee changes serve rotation in some way. And yeah, looks like they're going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. They go right back to Jordan. She handles it. And Upshaw, and that one landed. Smith tried to keep that up off the hardwood. That was close. She, I think the call was correct, but that was close. Here's Bruns. And she was almost off the court and still was able to find an angle. Her fifth kill of the day. That ties Naomi Kanapke for team leadership and match leadership, actually. And Hutchins to Upshaw, it's going to go over and out. I like Gianna Upshaw. Left-handed player, that throws you off a little bit as a blocker sometimes, and she's played well today mm -hmm. across the front row. Five kills for her. And she'll rotate over to that right side where yes, going to be a nice, nice place to swing. Good point, Garrett. Here's Mackenzie Brickner. And... Parkway cannot return the serve. You see Naomi Kanapi was way off the net, almost out of bounds trying to make that play. It was a little too far for her to get a clean effort to, to spike the ball. And a little mix up receiving the serve. Emery Temple going to take the air. Kenzie Brickner with her first ace, her team's second.
Temple receives that one cleanly. Now Bruns on the attack. Dug by Sammy Reddick. And Upshaw there. There's that attack, but too strong. I like to look at the different serving styles. You saw right there that Brickner serves almost from the wall. Some girls like to serve left side, right side, middle. It's kind of interesting to see how different service ideas by different players. And uh, Shawnee loses it. That was a miscommunication. I think Upshaw was hoping the setter could get to the ball and she, she wouldn't have to play it, be able to kill it, but the setter couldn't get there. We got some activity into the net. Yeah. I think they're going to get Parkway. I think called number. Well, I don't know. I was looking for a number called. Maybe mm -hmm. it was number 10. I think that's what it was. St. Levin. Shane Levin knocks it over. Which she can do because she's a front row mm -hmm. player right now. Good attack. Carly Hutchins with the set and Kinnear's cross court try is going to go wide. Wasn't able to get on top of the ball and drive it down, so it was three or four feet out of bounds. Adrian Miller back in. And she sends the serve in. Received by Emily McKissick. And that's going to get sent back and out of bounds. Good velocity from Leah Ruddesill, and Parkway couldn't do much. Yeah, Emery, the libero, Emery Temple, wasn't sure whether to play it or not. There's so much steam on the ball when she played it, went out of bounds. There's Kanapke, another big kill in the middle. She'll tap out for Cammie Langenkamp. Now that Parkway rotates around in service. Right and make that uh, Addie Kriegel on the hitting air. Here's Temple serving once more. Parkway by two. They have a one set to none lead. Best of three. The championship match of the Parkway volleyball invite. Attack is going to go out from Carly Hutchins. Tried to go down the right sideline and missed. All of a sudden, it's a three point lead. Good received by Ruddesill. Looking for that back stripe from Maddie Kriegel. Got to go touch. out. Yeah, and got touch. Yep. Yep. Fingertip got on, on, the, on the way through. Line judge called it. I think the official called it as well. Coach Hinkle asking who touched the ball to net. Maggie Jordan on the serve. Shawnee will play it on the continuation. There, you got the touch for sure. Rennesil on the kill. She's come alive a little bit here in this mm -hmm. set. And Shawnee has pulled back to within one. And there's a miss hit from Langenkamp. Ball in the top of the tape instead of being able to clear it. Mm -hmm. And looking for the break-even point, and going to shoot it long. Ruddesill on the attack. Jordan made a nice play defensively to save one, but then the kill attempt went long. Here's the serve from Bryn Shane Levin. That's four hits for Shawnee. Hutchins had to run a long way. She's a back row player, so she couldn't play the ball from forward from her net position and she tipped it backwards, but her teammates weren't able to use it. Hutchins sets up Kriegel and drops it in. Shawnee able to stop that Parkway run. And Gianna Upshaw back in the contest. 
for McKissick. Langan can't drop it in. Shawnee can't return. 14-12. You're a big baseball guy. That's like giving them the changeup when they're expecting the fastball. It is. Of similarities between those two games. You had hit percentage and <laughs> kills are like strikeouts almost. Another score for Parkway. Yeah, but the Indians put a guy on the DL because he's got a broken fingernail. <laughs> Come on. Okay, I know it was serious. I know I'm being <laughs> facetious here, but there's an ace. Kobe Smith's fourth ace of this set, fifth of the yep. day. Really clean it up. Yep, we look at a four-point lead, and she's got four aces in the set. Set for Upshaw. And Parkway, there at that time, Smith trying to get underneath of that. I think she hesitated a moment because she thought the libero was going to come and get the ball, mm -hmm. and when that didn't happen, she kind of dove at it a little bit, and by then it was too late. Here's Sammy Rennig to serve it up for Shawnee. Received by Smith. Shane Levin set for bronze and a big attack, but look at this. Big time dig by Rennig. Keep that ball alive. And that's a great rally for Shawnee. Lee Ruddesill, the next time over the net, Takes the big hit, and Shawnee's within two. Yeah, that looked like that was a sure parkway point, and it ends up being a rudder so kill going down the line. Long pass for Bruns. She just drops it in. It's going to go over. Temple finds Langenkamp. Jordan keeps it in the air. And now Upshaw comes up short. Jordan's a good libero. She's made a lot of diving plays today that pops the ball up in the air for her teammates. Unfortunately for them, Upshaw couldn't finish the play, and Parkway still with their three-point lead. Langen can't serve. Carly Hutchins passes back to Ruddesill. Blocked, but it's going to stay this side of the line. She had so much power on the ball that the two blockers couldn't control it onto the floor. How about that, yes. Shane Levin? Kind of an awkward attack, but it does the job. She got a really nice pass, and now she's left-handed in that right corner, and there's a front row player. She could hit the ball deep into the other corner. That was really well done by both players. Now the points to clinch starting to tick down for Parkway. Big attack, Ruddesill, and that's going to put the side out in Shawnee's end. Elias had a really good second set with four kills to lead her team. She's got four of her team's eight kills in this set. Here's Emily McKissick to serve. It's going to go over. Could be trouble, and Kinnear can't handle it. That was an overpass that time, and she had to make that quick decision. Do I play it myself and try to get the point? Or do I bump it up in the air so it can be set to a teammate? And she chose to play it herself and just wasn't able to execute it. Adria Miller serving. Mishandled. And it's 20 to 16 Parkway. They're starting to inch in. And with that, Shawnee triggers the timeout. 20 to 16. Late stages of set two. Parkway getting close at their invitational. We'll be back on WOSN. Today's presenting sponsor at the Parkway Volleyball Invite is the People's Bank. We are invested in the communities we serve. Your bank, your way. And a service ace out of the timeout for Parkway. They're just four points shy of clinching. Two Six, set sweep. Sixth ace in this set, ninth overall. Serve receive has been a bit of a problem for Shawnee today. 
Here's the Miller serve. Tack Ruddesill blocked up front, but trickles out off of Parkway. When they need a point, they go to Leah Ruddesill. She's done well here with that in this set. Now she will go back to serve. He's got to send it over. Now Jordan with the pass to Carly Hutchins. And that falls in for another Shawnee score. That's how they opened the set. They got the libero involved by having Maggie Jordan be the setter and then get a kill from Carly Hutchins. Britton Bruns on the receive. Now Smith sends it. Hutchins on the pass. Back row from Ruddesill. Bruns just tapped over. Nobody going to be back there after the first ricochet. And Parkway picks up the point. Catch him by surprise by going over on two instead of on you know, the third hit. Here's the serve. It kind of gets put back at the net, kind of in no man's land, and Parkway wins it there. Although it's not an ace, it's a service problem for Shawnee on that play. They're two points away from it now, Parkway Panthers. Emory Temple serves. Received by McKissick. Now they got to settle and send it over. Parkway can set up. Here's the attack from Smith, blocked but kept alive. Now Bruns sets up Langenkamp. Shawnee's got to send it over again. Couldn't get settled. Pass to Smith. And nobody home. Had two Indians on the floor to try to get it. And now it's match point for the Parkway Panthers. Looking to sweep their way really through the day. Here's the Temple serve. It's short. And Shawnee lives to see another attack. But the big hit, Smith, Colby Smith, finishes it for Parkway. And the Panthers 25-18 after a 25-15 first set. They will capture the title in the Parkway Volleyball Invite. Straight set wins all day long for this group. And a couple of numbers that stand out in that last match. Mark, what do you see over there? Well, they, Parkway Panthers only had eight kills in the second set, but they had six service aces, plus they put a Shawnee on her heels a bit, trying to receive serve, so that was really the key. Uh, we have six kills for Naomi Kanapke today. That led her team. Seven kills for Leah Ruddesill. Her team had 10 kills. Total of uh, nine aces in the two sets for Parkway. A total of just two aces for Shawnee. And that'll wrap up our coverage for the day here as well at the Parkway Volleyball Invite. Thanks to everybody here at Parkway for the hospitality throughout the day. For our scoreboard sponsor, Wabash Mutual Telephone, premier sponsor in the State Bank, and presenting sponsor in the People's Bank. From Megan Sherrick on at cameras today, and uh, Mark Shine alongside me, I'm Garrett Mansfield saying a so long from Parkway, and thank you for watching WOSN.